by the power of Grey Skull. Now, let's go over A-Knight's kit because I believe a lot of you don't exactly know what's going on and you're wondering why are you getting so much moxie off of him and how is he ulting so much, right? That's because of his skills. His skills give him extra moxie and they give you more as you increase them. So his first skill here, Justice, is a one target attack, deals 180% reality damage and if the target is defeated, he gets moxie plus one for himself and as you upgrade this ability, it'll give you more moxie as you take out the target, doing up to 450% reality damage. His second attack is going to be a mass attack. Now, this first upgrade is going to do 150% reality damage to two enemies. But as you upgrade it to two and three, you'll get extra moxie for yourself and it'll do more damage. So he is a character that wants to maximize on taking out targets, right? So if you're using other characters to weaken the enemies, make sure that you finish off with a knight so he can get to his ultimate. His ult skill is going to be after AD 778. It's going to be a mass attack that deals 550% uh, 500 reality damage Sorry to all enemies. If any target is defeated, all allies gain one stack of rousing morale. When the caster attacks, damage bonus plus 50%. This is a huge cleave that he can get very quickly by just taking out targets. Now, with this insight levels, this allows him to get some extra damage. His first one, insight one, for every max HP times 20% H HP loss by the target, Damage dealt plus 10%. So it's going to allow him to kind of do like somewhat of like an execute or whatever, but he just gets extra damage when the target is low. That way you can help finish off targets. In Sight 2, he'll get uh, damage taken minus 8% when he enters battle. Uh, that allows him to just tank a little bit. Um, and then In Sight 3, whenever you get there, for every max HP lost by the enemy, you get extra penetration as well, which allows him to get extra penetration off of those tankier units. To finish them off so again he is a character that is gonna be great for finishing off targets um and so you can work with him as a sub slot so where if your main dps dies you can put him in or you can use him as a main dps um especially if you have a team that does a lot of um aoe damage now personally when it comes to resonate stacks um i would rather want to put a little bit more tank on him because i don't want to have to use a lot of healing. I want to maximize on giving him as much damage as possible versus using just a flat healer. So HP, attack, reality, defense, and mental defense will be really good to work with him. Also, a little bit of damage taken reduction. But damage bonus is going to be a big um, bonus on him as well. Since his kit doesn't give him, um, on his insights, doesn't give him any extra crit rate or crit damage, not really going to focus on that a lot, especially because we don't have a lot of people who can manipulate crit for other units yet. Um, so I'm mainly want to focus on just flat damage, giving him some decent amount of tank. That way he can just stay on field, keep using as much, um, AP as he can and just maximize. And remember, just keep trying to level this up and load them in because he has some, um, pretty decent, um, resonate pieces. But again, my focus will be on for him taking less damage. Of course, getting a little extra crit rate will help, right? Um, but since he doesn't get in his insights, that's not a big focus of mine. Um, right now and then as we get further in global you know we'll be able to raise these resonate stats and we'll be able to see what he looks like on full build and i'll give you guys a full update of like a maxed out um a knight once we get there let's talk about the side cubes that work well with a knight um so brave new world six star that you can use with him after he casts his ult he'll get an incantation might of the next incantation plus 20 percent um ultimate might also so this will allow him to do a nice bit of damage with that ult might buff and then his next incantation is going to do an extra bonus damage so you can help that you can use that to help you finish off another target after casting their ult if there's any stragglers to move on to like the next round of uh something and then when it's maxed out you'll get that 18 percent ult might buff and then the 40 percent um incantation might buff um hopscotch is going to work well for you if there's um more than of course just the boss the incantations are going to get a buff which he wants to maximize incantation damage as well. That way he can finish off targets a lot easier. And then after defeating those targets, his ult is going to get a buff, stacking up four times. So you at least want to try to have at least a stage that has four enemies with using this. And then when it's maxed out, you get an 18% incantation might buff. And then he will get a huge 32% damage buff on his ult, 
to honestly probably clear out the rest of the enemies with the mass attack. Her second life is going to be useful if you want to kind of give a little extra healing to him. It's going to give just a kind of basic attack buff. But after he casts a mass ult, his HP um, times his carrier attack will give um, a bonus of HP to extra allies. So this is if you want some survivability um, on your A Knight, not really wanting to use um, a lot of healers. Let's say you're using like DK or somebody. It's very useful to him. Uh, Blast from a knight is good if you are using like a debuffer. Um, he'll just get an extra um, amount of damage based off of him having two or more negative statuses. Um, and then when you maximize that, right, you get a big incantation might buff. And then this again increases his damage shell. An option to use, especially if you're using a debuffer, which I know a lot of you will be. Next up, his bounden duty is an option again if you want to give some um, extra HP to him whenever he defeats a target. He will get HP plus carriers attack times 60. He'll get a damage bonus as the main stat to help him if he's taking out a lot of units to heal himself. And again, he is wanting to take out a lot of units. So this is an option, not his best option, but again, for survivability. Uh, Footloose is going to give him ult might. So this is going to be a good five star option. I know we get this one for free. And if the uh, target is going to be above 50%, he'll get a damage dealt bonus of plus 8%. And then when you max it out, ult might, which will help out with his ult. And then he'll get extra damage if they're above 50%, which is nice because he wants to take out the target. So, I mean, if you can take out the target from 50% um, onto zero, this will be huge, right? And then he gets that extra damage whenever they're missing HP as well. Um, and then the four-star options, you can use like Venomous or the Coin um, also help out. Uh, but those are going to be the best like psy cubes to use with him. All right, so there's some really great options that you can use with a knight um, from six stars being like Anna and Lee with her um, damage buff. You also have healers like Medicine Pocket if you're wanting to use a lot of healing on him and then Balloon Party as well. Uh, one of my favorite characters to use with a knight is going to be Cure and Bloom just with her um, mass debuff. Um, affecting uh, reality defense minus 15% and damage shaken plus 15% um, at level 1 and then it going up to 25%. You're able to just throw this ability out and then keep going with A Knight. That way she's not, uh, Bjorn Bloom's not really using a lot of AP. You don't have to do a lot of damage with her and you can allow A Knight to maximize the amount of damage that she has, right? Now where we're at in global, um, when it comes to some healers or survival characters, you have a couple options as well. Um, with the fact that uh, A Knight's banner has Tenet, Tenet's going to be a really great option because she has a really reality defense reduction in her kit as well. Um, and then you have other heal options. Like I said, Balloon Party earlier. You have Apple that gives the passive heal at Insight 1, which I hope you guys are upgrading your Apple. Oliver Fog is going to give the um, sturdiness buff, which will help the tankiness of your characters if you don't need a lot of uh, healing. You have Sinetto, which is going to be a really good option for um, a lot of free to plays who aren't doing a lot of pulling because she's going to give a buff for um, damage dealt. That's universal. So if you want to pair a knight with maybe another DPS on some of those boss stages, you can use Sinetto and then she'll do a damage reduction buff um, as well. Yeah, some other options um, to use like Necrologist and Door if you're wanting to use a self-sacrifice team to maximize the amount of moxie that you can give. Um, to him by just resing Dora back and you can just give a big boost to a knight not really buffing his damage before you get there but you can just spam ult right and then you have leilani um as well who buffs uh extra moxie but she has to use more ap to get to that so it's not as great but like i said if you're summoning on a knight's banner try to get up a cure and bloom and tenant to pair with him and that's just a team right there with tenant giving the shield cure and bloom debuffing and then uh both of them working you just give a knight as much damage as possible that's really great. And then the whale options are going to be like using um, Anna and Lee if you can get them um, with the healer, right? All right, so let's show A Knight in battle. Now, uh, he is a spirit character, so he's not going to get any extra damage on the enemies, which is uh, one of the downsides to him because he's not getting that 30% extra damage. But he's not going to be taking a lot of extra damage from units. So uh, we're not really worried about taking a lot of damage from the enemies. So we're going to be using Sinetto and Bikur and Bloom to kind of just maximize the amount of damage that he gets, right? Um, so what you want to focus on again is taking out the extra enemies, um, to boost the amount of moxie that he can get. Combining your skills will also help him gain a lot of moxie. So whenever you can do that, you just want to go ahead and do that. So 
We'll use um, one of these turns here to combine this attack. And we'll let uh, Sineto uh, and Bikurin Bloom get some damage off on the enemies to kind of just help out. A Knight taking out some targets. And thankfully, they won't take them out, but... Now, this next turn, we can use the buff and debuff, and then use our boosted attack to help out. All right, let's go ahead and get that level 2 single target attack out, and we will get a big boost of Moxie. All right, and now he's at max Moxie just right after that. I'm um, combining that skill. And then on that next attack, you can use it. So the enemies are still debuffed. We still have our buffs. So let's go ahead and use our ult. And we'll use the... We'll use this next one because um, there's only two targets. That way we can get that extra damage to maximize on the debuff that we have. Being that they're two turn, which is really uh, nice that Sinetto and B Corn Bloom have that too. But look at this attack. It looks really good. Might just kill everything with this, actually. Yeah, so you see that? That's why I love a knight. He does huge damage, and you're able to cycle that more. Could have done a harder stage, but I really just wanted to show his skills. My full thoughts on a knight versus a lot of the other characters. Um, being that he's a spirit character, he doesn't get as much damage as everybody else, but he doesn't take as much damage. So there are going to be some stages where there's going to be an intellect character that he'll work really well for. But, you know, there's going to be a lot of stages where there's going to be either a beast, a mineral, or a plant, spirit. Um, that he's not going to do the extra damage. So you will need to use some buffers and debuffers to allow him to do that extra 30% difference. But with him getting so much moxie um, on his skills and then being able to spam his ult, that will help him to get a lot of extra damage out. So I do recommend getting him, especially if you're free to play, because it's just an easy banner to summon on. By if you're re-rolling, you can get this whole team and possibly some copies on the other two characters, right? Um, and that's just a team for you. And then you can save until you want and you haven't even summoned on the beginner banner yet right so hopefully this video was helpful to you guys um a knight uh is a really fun character for me and my free-to-play account and i'm gonna be streaming uh this account as well as my other two accounts cn and my uh well account so hopefully you guys check me out on either the live streams here on youtube or you can check me out on twitch at lucky lux gaming uh and then comment down below how your a knight's been helping you on your teams if you guys got them if you really love them if you have any more questions about a night let me know in the comment section or you can hit me up on discord uh subscribe to the channel if you guys want more uh content i'm also going to be dropping some cn content coming soon so um if you're wondering what cns are like uh you can either again check out my live streams where i uh, stream it or you can just ask me specific questions but anyways i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here you lucky gamers have a good one lucky lux out